And off we go. Okay, uh, so uh, first of all, the approval of, of the minutes of the previous meeting. Has everybody had a chance to read them? And does anyone have any uh, questions or revisions? I just pointed out two things to um, Tim and Laurel. And it's Mario, please don't take this just because I know people read this. And where it says the dates for our meetings, it says each month, the second Tuesday, but we don't meet in July. So maybe just put in except July. Um, and then what was the other thing? Oh, that suggestion about um, the COVID memories, that was Lindsay's idea. Member Lindsay started that conversation, which I thought was really interesting. So that's all I had to mention. Yeah, okay. what, what was, what, uh, what item is that? So oh, I don't have it open, I'm sorry. So 10, I could, and I can make these edits. Mark. Yeah, Laurel will uh, do I'll it. I'll do it. Meetings are planned for the second Tuesday. I got 10, but the other one, uh, what, what, what item was that? 12. Hillary proposed, you know, didn't we go back and forth on whether it was Lindsay or Hillary, Laurel? I mean, I remember having it one way and then another. Um, I, I couldn't remember myself, but um, I actually went back and watched the meetings and, and uh, it was it was Lindsay who started it and then it turned into um, just more discussion, so. Okay, well, I'll change those two things. Can, can we... Uh... Can we move forward with uh, those two changes uh, accepted and? Yes, I, I would entertain a motion to that effect that we will approve the minutes um, with the understanding that Mary will make the changes that we just discussed. I have a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Who, who said that made the second time? All in favor say aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. The motion's carried, minutes approved. Um, correspondence. Uh, so, um, Laurel, do you have any correspondence? Because I can talk a little bit about the uh, COVID correspondence uh, after you do, after um, your whatever correspondence. Yeah, I, don't, I don't have anything um, out of the, the norm budget correspondence. I've been corresponding with um, somebody from URI. Um, but nothing directed directly at the board, except for I did forward you guys that um, climate change. Oh yeah, that's tomorrow night. Right, so that, that was directly asked to be passed along to you guys. But um, mm -hmm. aside from that, anything else can be touched upon in the rest of the agenda. Okay, um, I did receive an email from the woman who was uh, uh, running the COVID oral history project in South County. Um, I, I forwarded that to everybody today. You might not have had a chance to read it yet, um, but we can talk about that uh, later under um, item eight, uh, the oral history project. She she may join us tonight. I don't know. I did send her the link um, for the meeting, but- I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the okay. So we'll move on to uh, the director's report, Laurel. So I'm gonna, Try the, try the screen share. Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so not, I mean, we were, we're closed. Today was our first day open at Peacedale and the uh, Kingston Open yesterday. Um, Hale, was, <laughs> Hale. Hale was closed uh, in December because of heat and we were also unfortunately closed yesterday because of heat and that was um, really just an issue with the propane delivery for heating. So I'm um, pretty sure we have that resolved now and they should be up and running today, if not today. Wait, wait, Laura, wait a minute. You, are you saying that the delivery people just didn't fill the tank? Um, no, um, what happened was we had a mirror gas and um, we were having issues getting delivery and, and talking to them and um, having service. So we switched from a mirror gas to feral 
And in that process, um, it, it, you know, things just, there was just a little gap and um, some miscommunication on it if the tanks got topped off and, and all that. So all right. yeah. it, it should be resolved now. It wasn't that, you know, <laughs> they just didn't show up. It was just, there were just some issues with communication. And I, I think, again, this is a result too of a lot of stuff that's going on that either people are swamped or they're not in the office or, or that kind of thing. Business. Working from home. Yes, exactly. Right. Um, so Champlin, we're hoping, and I'm um, sure we'll get in our request for that uh, HVAC system and the new condenser that we need to have AC at Peacedale. And happy to report we now have our own YouTube channel. And we could talk about that more when we get down to item number 10. And just our general meetings. Um, we had some training on the telephone and our programs. And I didn't, um, because of budget and Champlin, I didn't really get a lot of time to focus on um, statistics, but I thought PM might, since we just opened, um, PM could speak a little to, you know, how busy our curbside was and also how, how it was today for opening. So PM, if, if you don't mind, I'll stop. Yeah. Not at all. Um, today we opened um, at Peacedale and we, between the hours, well, when I left at five o'clock, we had almost 80 people in the building, which is pretty good. Nice combination of um, people going upstairs as well as the children's room. I think we had about 10 people in the children's room or nine people, you know, from one to three in three hours. That's pretty good. Um, we had 10 people upstairs between the hours of 10 and 11. We had 12 people upstairs between the hours of 11 and 12. So that made 22 people in two hours when we first opened. We have a beautiful sign outside saying open. And um, wow. I don't know, it was a good day. So we had, we had a lot of people, almost, almost 80 when I left, like I said. Um, curbside was really off the charts for December. Um, because, you know, we closed the, well, we didn't close, we, we closed to the public the end of November. And um, the total for the end of November was 294 curbside pickups. Um, December, we went up to 1368. So we increased wow. so much when we closed. And then year to date thus far is 5457. So people, you know, they're using our services, what, what we can offer comfortably. Um, the feedback today, you know, being open was very positive. People were happy, you know, happy to come in, happy to just, you know, come in, browse for a few minutes and leave. We had a couple of people ask how long they could stay. And um, the guideline is really try to limit it to 15 minutes. But it was all, I think staff is happy to have people back in the build, you know, building as well. It's easier to help people when they're, you know, face to face like that. We still had curbside today. I, I have to say, I didn't look to see how many, but there are some people that are opting to not come in. And we had a lot of tax form questions today too, because we do get the federal tax forms in the building. So yeah, so it feels good. Felt a little normal. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. And I, I will welcome, Sophia has joined us. Um, I'm sure you guys can see. So welcome, Sophia. We're just running through the agenda. And we're up to, thank you very much, Pam. Um, I did notice, I will say this as a aside to you, you know, I check the cameras every once in a while to see, you know, cars and, and traffic. And each time I checked it, just this, that, you know, this morning, there was somebody standing there talking, you know, they just want to talk. Sometimes they right. just want that, you know, at the, the greeter. So I'm looking and it, you can just see that people just need that interaction. So I think, um, that alone is a, a service itself. So, thank you. Okay. Anything else on director's report, Laurel, or should we move uh, on to Champlin request? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so you mentioned it briefly. Uh, the request for uh, the money on the air conditioning system. 
Um, can you give a little more information on where it stands, how much money we're looking for? So, then... sure, it is, um, and I, I could get the exact figure um, for you, Mario, but it's a little over $56,000, um, and that would be three different pieces. Um, the way it's set up is that the priority would be the, the air conditioner itself, and then the two other pieces of it are the fresh air um, systems handlers, and it, we would need to one for the, you know, the main level downstairs and the, the second one for the upper level. So the, the, so the, the 56K is all for that air conditioning and it's related systems at Hale. Correct. Okay. Uh, I'm just, sorry. I'll just say Did that. Just I won't say get into detail. Yeah. All right. Peace this is at Peacedale. Sorry? This is at Peacedale. Oh, I, yeah. I meant to say Peacedale. Sorry. Oh. Um, correct. Um, so the, like I said, the first piece is the actual condenser unit. And then the two other pieces are the air handlers for the main level and the upper level. So, um, you know, the priority would be the main level the, where the public is. And the, the last priority would be the, the administrative office. Sorry, Pam, sorry, me, you know, like if, <laughs> if they decide that, well, we'll we'll do the AC and this, you know, so be it. But at least it gives us a little wiggle room where, you know, if they can't, if they say you know, we're only going to do a piece of it, they have the priority of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, what, what's the uh, due date for that application? Friday. Oh, Friday. Friday. It's almost um, done. Um, I talked to the finance director yesterday and he assured me he would get the figures in that they needed to provide, which is a, a kind of a bunch of figures for um, budgets and endowments. And they, they look at like how much um, money do you have? How much debt do you have as, as a town? And, and mm -hmm. I think that lends to need maybe. I, I'm, that's not my wheelhouse. But um, so thank you for your help, Tim. And, and you got, did you get the invitation I sent you to, to look uh, at I did, it? and I have looked at it and maybe, maybe I'll give you a call tomorrow. Um, okay. I had a couple of thoughts. <laughs> well, the, the 56,000, uh, is that, uh, where'd that estimate come from? Is that, does the town bid that out or did they just estimate it or how did uh, work? No, we had a company come in, the company that does, um, has done and does um, a lot of the HVAC work for the town and mm -hmm. I'm sure other municipalities. Um, so they came in and, and gave us a quote. Mm -hmm. There's actually, um, and you'll see that, um, I think it's, it's part of that application. If you look yeah. down at where it breaks down the budget of it, mm -hmm. it's in there. You're roughly like twenty thousand dollars a piece. Um, and speaking of Champlin, so can you give us a status update on the paintings? I, I noticed they were out working yesterday, I guess, or and today. I saw them today. Yeah. They are, they're putting the storm windows back. Uh, they actually, <clears throat> the windows were painted shut. So uh -huh. they had to uh, make sure those were all working and put the storm windows back. Um, mm -hmm. Still, there's work to be done and that will be done in the spring. And we do have um, a little bit of money left over from the grant. And then I got good news today that um, from our previous 2018 grant, we had a small surplus um, and they like to see the money applied um, fully. So they, you know, ask you to find if you have uh, you know, extra money, find a use for it. And I asked, well, can we use it to help with all the additional work that we have? Because um, I'm thinking, or I was told that it's, we don't have an exact figure, but it could be upwards of $15,000 that still remains to do all that woodwork. We have, you know, sills are rotting, pieces of the building or need definite rehabilitation. So 
that's good news that we'll be able to apply previous grant money that we just um, figured out what it was once the phone systems got installed from the 2018 grant. Um, so that's where that additional money can be applied. So that's good news, but it won't be done till spring. I did ask today, I know for you guys that see it, when you walk in and you see that one big panel right to the right of the door. And I, said to, I said to the facilities manager, I said, it looks terrible. I don't care what you do, do something about it. You know, and not to mention the, uh, you know, heat's getting right out that big old hole and everything. But so hopefully I'm sure that will get done. Um, Posting. Hope so, good because it's taped on with masking tape. Oh. Uh, Can you just do something? Something, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> One big snowstorm and it's going to come down. Right. Yeah. right. Horrible. It, it is. Well, that's good. So that that I, I will I will stay on top of that. That will be done as soon as possible. But the rest of the stuff that you don't really see where the sills are rotting out or a window frame needs to be rebuilt, that's gonna be in the spring. Okay, good. Um, well, that kind of leads into the next item, which is uh, board giving because it is re somewhat related or it is related to the, the Champlin request. It sure uh, is. And I can speak a little bit about this, Laurel, and then you can jump in. Um, but uh, like uh, many, uh, philanthropic organizations that give money um, out in grants. Uh, the uh, Champlin Foundation um, likes to know what uh, kind of contributions the, the board, boards of directors or boards of trustees make as well. There is a question on the uh, grant application form uh, about the board giving policy. It says, do you have a stated policy that expects all board members to make a personal financial contribution, uh, whether it is to find them out um, or an, an amount that is meaningful to the member. And, and uh, we do not have that. And, and I'm not advocating for that. Um, and, and then there is another uh, question about um, if you don't uh, ask a board to make monetary contributions, uh, help us understand why. Uh, so as we all know, this is a volunteer board. Um, nobody gets paid for this uh, and no expectation um, of uh, you know, making a financial contribution uh, to the library. Uh, what um, Laurel has written in, in response to the question about if you do not have a, uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't expect your board to make a monetary contribution, help us understand why. This, this is what uh, Laurel has written. This is a volunteer board with no financial compensation Trustees provide citizen control and governance of the town's library system. Explicit expectation of a financial contribution could be construed as an obligation that does not necessarily fit with the board's mission. Additionally, this expectation could be a deterrent to citizens who wish to serve their community, but are not in the fiscal position to contribute. Thank board, you. Re board representation has reflected the nature of libraries with equitable and free access to participation and mm -hmm. services. So, so uh, you know, I think for those uh, on the board and elsewhere who are in the position where they're able to make contributions, great. If uh, uh, they're, they're not, that's fine as well. Um, uh, and I think this explanation that Laurel has uh, uh, given in, in the uh, application form uh, is uh, uh, fine and really covers all the bases. Hey, Tim, can you send me a copy of that paragraph so I can put it in a minute? Yes. Thank you. Yes. They don't, Laurel, include the friends donations? That doesn't count? No, they do. They do. Oh, they do. Okay, good. I will say we are already, you know, looking better than we did last year, if you were just looking at it on paper. Um, so thank you for all that um, have donated. Um, I, is it amount donation or is it percentage? It's a percentage. So for the seven people, we're we're almost at half. We're at forty three percent. Yeah. 
Hello? And you know, I was going to ask, uh, what kind of level of gift are we talking about here? They don't specify. They just want to know that everybody is. They don't say, they, they don't want names. They don't want um, anything like that. I mean, if I can share my screen again. That's why I was asking about the amount or the percentage of people, because in that case, it, you know, it could be a very small amount yeah. if everyone was able to do a little bit. I mean, whatever that would be, whatever. I don't know. So, I mean, they recognize that you guys are contributing beyond contributing time and talent to the organization or percentage of the board made monetary contributions in the last fiscal year. Please note that percentage is an adjustment form. So we're at 43. Um, so Laurel, what is, the, uh, what is the mechanism to give a gift to the library? What do you do? You can um, write a check to the, you could give cash to the Friends of the Library. Um, that's, or write a check to the Friends of the Library. Um, that's it, just write a check to the Friends of the South Kingstown yep. Library? South Kingstown, well, the the Friends are set up, you can do it to the Friends of the Peacedale Library, the Friends of the Kingston Library, the Friends of the Hale Library. It doesn't um, matter in the, you know, I wish they were all one body, but they're three bodies. Um, so either of them would be appropriate to don't to donate to. Well, you're glad they don't have three boards, Laurel. <laughs> well, no, that would be a nightmare. <laughs> well, they do. They all have their own governing body. Right, I understand. Yeah. And, so uh, any one I, of those would be acceptable. And uh, Laurel, I just want to say I appreciate. I know it's a delicate line you had to walk um, on that um, on that write up, and I uh, I just want to say I appreciate uh, the care you took uh, in writing it, uh, and I'm, I'm sure all of us will, um, if we're able, uh, will contribute. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah I, I I agree with Michael. I think it's beautifully written. It's really thoughtful. Thank you. Yeah. It's from the heart. I I don't believe that a non-paying board should. Well, and as I said to you, we all pay taxes to our state and our town if you own property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it's not like this is the Rhode Island School of Design Museum where it's a private nonprofit. You know, I, I don't know. I just have a problem. And I can, you know, I've given small donations, not a lot of money. And um, because I want to help the friends, which I know helps the library. But I'm still, I've said this to Laurel, I'm a little surprised that Champlin puts that burden on, or puts that question in for um, for a public library. I well, mean, you gotta, Liz, you gotta I, consider it's not just libraries that are getting money. No, I understand, uh, but meaning there hospitals. might be a slightly different form or something, you know, that this only applies to private nonprofits. You know, whether it's the RISD Museum. How about the Redwood Library where you work, Laurel? That's not part of the public library system. No, but they could get money. Right. But the, from, and right. From Champlin. So, like, so it, it, like, you have to look at it. It's not just us poor public libraries that are asking for money and getting it. It's, it's other agencies as well that. Right. Standard application. Yeah, it is. Liz, I agree. I'll tell you what, it's, it's, get what you left. it's not unreasonable. I mean, if you were. Champlin, and it's your money, and you're giving it. You'd like to know that the people. I totally understand. Money. You read about yeah. these boards; they put people on boards of the big art museums in New York City, so they'll get their collection. You oh, know, that's. For, that <laughs> I don't have a collection of books to give you guys, but anyways, <laughs> I just think it's a little weird. But I mean, I've contributed, so it's not that it's holding me back. Yeah, no, um, but you know, for instance, I haven't, but uh, I wasn't really quite sure what to do. But I'll, I'll, I'll. I'll Run a check down for a small Anyways. amount. So that's that's fine. You know, we could. And I, I don't. As long as it's just a percentage of the board membership percentage. Right. They're not, not asking how much. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this isn't, this isn't peculiar to uh, the Champlin Foundation. I, I've seen other grant application forms that have similar questions. They, they just like to know who the people are, what their support is. And I think Laurel's explanation is, is as Lindsay said, very well yes. wrapped it and I'm sure they'll understand that. 
Thank you. Um, what they also are asking, um, and this is a little tweak from last year, is your makeup of your board. So they want to know um, sex, race, uh, age. So I don't want to put everybody on the spot with the age one, but if you guys can email me your ages, um, I can add that into you. <laughs> I'll try not to reply off. <laughs> right. Just, I can say I'm the youngest. Say that, uh, <laughs> they're going to get the vaccine quicker than uh, my yeah, kids. Right, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> well, I get my vaccine, exactly. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll send out a reminder email about <laughs> just so you can you know, give them what they're asking for. If they want to know, they, they're looking for diversity um, to bring that. I'll bring it back just so you can see the question itself. So, oh, and that is another thing I'd like to just touch upon. Like they, they want, so where you see here the board practices, they want to know that, um, you know, it's not just a, a stale board. Uh, what are we doing to educate ourselves about best, best practices and responsibilities and are we doing um, different things to you know help in the, the roles that you graciously undertaken so um, we have done things you guys I think have done some of the open meeting stuff and I know Donna participated in a few of the um, Panel you might want to jump in. I, I forget which one exactly. You went to a, a couple of the webinars. Um, so that was one thing I just wanted to throw out there. And then the other thing is the board makeup. So um, feel free to tell us what diversity means to your organization and share what efforts your organization is making to include diverse voices on the board and staff. So um, these are all, they're really drilling down. And I think that's a product of, of just, um, just society too. So um, anything that you guys, if you have any input about any of this or any thoughts that you think I could apply in this, you know, please feel free to share those you know, now or in an email. Um, it will just help to show that we're we're doing what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I have a, just a thought for the future, Laurel, on that topic of diversity. The next time there's a, a vacancy on the board, perhaps we should consider, you know, how we might reach out to uh, different uh, groups to uh, in in the interest of diversity. So that's something to keep in mind. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, anything else on uh, board giving, or should we move to uh, the next item, which is uh, an update on services? Uh, we could, yeah, definitely move on. So, um, as we mentioned earlier, all our branches are open now. We're, uh, you know, still doing the limited capacity, uh, still pra practicing our social distancing and hand washing and wiping stuff down. Um, today was our first day back, so I'm sure I'll have more to report next month. Um, the ultimate goal with this is to keep adding services when we can. So, you know, we still don't have that front room in Peacedale um, open. That would be, you know, a nice next step to take. Hale is still at reduced hours adding more hours there. I will, I will say this, we are um, down a few staff members too, because they, you know, chose not to continue working um, at the library due to, well, they chose not to continue working at the library and also one because she went to another job. Um, so we are short staffed and that is reflected in why some of our things have been cut back a little, but the goal would be to keep adding as much as we can when we can and doing it, doing it in a safe way. 
So Laurel, um, the in terms of staffing, I mean, it's really directly tied to our budget. Uh, I know you're kind of in the middle of that. Um, do you think that uh, the budget will still be uh, same this year as last year, or will there be changes? What What do you see? No, I, I do think that this year will be the same because these positions are considered vacancies. They're they're not gonna disappear. Yes, they might be frozen a little bit um, for many reasons. One is the environment. It's it's hard to interview and do all our lists in, in the current situation. Um, and me, you know, if if we're we are working at a reduced capacity, then you know sometimes. Um, we are standing on top of each other. So, you know, like it, it's, and we don't want that. We, we need to have um, staff, you know, in distancing. So um, I do not see that affecting this year's budget. And that could change, but this year I do not see that re really good reduction in salaries or anything like that. Okay. We still need it when we get back to where we were supposed to be. We need it, so it would. I would argue and, and fight for um, any move like that. Well, I'm. I'm just worried that with the amount of uh, suffering in the economy and the state's uh, tax collections down so much that they're going to. Uh, they're going to be forced to, to cut. You know, not just the library, but everywhere. And um, I, we should be we should be at least prepared for it, I guess. Um, I, I hope not, but you know, I, I it's hard to see where the money's coming from. Yeah, uh, you had uh, you, we had a note in the last uh, month that there was a thirty five k capital request to fix the problem pipe in Hale. Correct. Is there any update on that? Because that was in the last. Um, tomorrow night is the actual hearing for the CIP. So um, you all can certainly go. I'll be going. And um, I don't see the overall CIP for the town, I think, is lower than it was last year. Um, so and this is not uh, a big ask to have something that needs to be fixed. and will keep costing money if it doesn't get fixed and has disrupted services. And, and I think there's even uh, some kind of regulation that if something is <laughs> leaking to a certain point over a certain percentage, then you're in trouble with this state and the water people. Uh, so, it's a pay me now versus pay me later again and again and again kind of problem. You gotta deal with it. Exactly. So I, I, I can't see that not getting approved and i encourage you all to go if you you could certainly speak at public input and say that you want um just to go through but i, I think it will and then are you still holding the books for 72 hours or should i just take that out of the uh just take that, out of that. that was creating some problems for you last time when you talked about it well uh, only in people's patience well, <laughs> that could be a problem. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay, anything else on services, Laurel? Or um, move on? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, um, on item eight, future oral history projects. Uh, Donna, would you like to give us an update on where your projects stand? Okay, I haven't. I haven't done anything since what, what I did, you know, in December. There are several more um, sessions that I would like to have with different groups. And, and I haven't moved on that yet, but I, I would like to do that very much. I'm, I'm hearing about a COVID project and I, I don't want to interfere with that or that to interfere with whatever I might be doing. Mm -hmm. but, but I haven't, you know, I haven't invited anybody or done anything about that, but but I still have that. I could I could present that information. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I would like to, if I could jump in, Donna. Um, so far, within the three weeks that 
the panel discussion was posted on Facebook is had 221 views. Wow. That is really, oh, yeah, yeah. really. That's great. Great. And that's just on Facebook. Um, you know, we'll get it on YouTube. I think we'll probably have it um, in the newsletter. Uh, oh, for good. February coming up to point to that. So, um, yeah, well, well done. Okay. Great. That's so great. And I would also on on this topic add, I had a great conversation with a gentleman named Keith Brown from URI, and he is one of the professors um, of the media, Harrington School of Media. And okay. I approached him about, you know, if, if they were doing some type of field study for their students and they could um, maybe help us out with you know, one of these many projects, I was focusing on the Weaver. Um, so, and he was, he was interested. The problem therein lies is that he's dealing with much the same thing that we're dealing with, not right. knowing, you know, when students are going to be in person, not, you know, not, you know, all the different moving pieces. Um, but he, as, as we were talking about it, um, you know, like I said, was very interested um, if we were able to tap them to, to help us do some filming, um, you know, the, the students would obviously social, you know, we'd set up a place, um, probably the old main reading room, um, social distancing, students could probably be tested, you know, before they you know, came and did this, um, and it, it just sounded like he's already kind of dealt with it a little at the, the beginning of all this. So um, I think that might be another option that we could use. What was his name again, help. Laura? Pardon? Keith Brown. Keith Doctor. Brown. Yep. Uh, very, very nice gentleman and, and very interested, just not sure on timing. You know, he's like, well, do you have a deadline? And I'm like, no, we don't have a deadline. We just, you know, we're trying to find different avenues that we could do to create this um, type of content. Um, mm. The first to say, I'm not an expert at it. So why not talk to people that are trying to, you know, be experts or are experts at it. So um, uh, we're going to follow back up in February. Okay. And I did, I mean, I did have several other panels in mind and I was considering working on those, you know, during the spring, mm -hmm. but, but I, but I knew some other things were happening. So that's good. And, and that might be a possibility too. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Donna. Uh, so on the same topic, uh, at our last meeting, um, it came up, uh, there was some discussion about the COVID epidemic and what it means to people mm -hmm. and whether um, anyone who was kind of trying to gather uh, for posterity artifacts or discussions about COVID and people's experience with it here in South County. And at that meeting, I mentioned that I had seen a poster at Belmont's where I go just about every day. <laughs> I, and I looked for it. I found it too, Tim. <laughs> and I did reach out uh, to uh, the woman who um, is uh, uh, running a, a COVID oral history project in South County. Uh, I invited her to the meeting tonight. She is uh, here. Uh, and if the other board members approve, perhaps, uh, she, Sophia Richter, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, uh, could give us a brief um, description of uh, her project. And I, I did email, uh, forward an email to everyone, uh, her email describing it. But since we have her here, is that possible to uh, have her in, Laurel? Yeah, she's here. Can you hear us, Sophia? I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Hi. Um, let me try to get my camera. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Um, there you are. Hi. My name is Sophia. Um, thank you for welcoming me. I've just been kind of sitting, listening to your meeting. Not creepy or anything. Just <laughs> <so. clears throat> um, but I'll be really brief because I know Tim had mentioned that this wasn't really in your agenda. And so I'm not gonna take up much of your time. Um, 
but I was really excited when Tim reached out. Um, you're actually the first person to reach out to me from that poster on Bel in Belmont. So <laughs> I was very excited. Um, uh, so this project, it's again, yeah, it's something that I started running on my own, but I've been slowly working with other people in the community. Um, and the goal is to really build partnerships with anyone who wants to be involved. Um, my own background is um, not in oral history per se. Um, I just graduated college a few years ago. I grew up in South Kingstown, um, but I'm really interested in the way that um, creating a local oral history project can be really empowering to the community itself um, as a way of people taking ownership of their own histories um, and trying to be inclusive as possible for all the different kinds of stories that exist in South County. Um, I think this is really prescient with um, the movement of Black Lives, um, you know, trying to promote anti-racism in every avenue of our society. Um, so one aspect of this project has been to try to rethink um, the different kinds of outreach that a project like this would undergo. Um, historically, oral histories have been, um, can, historically have been exclusive, have used stories um, against, pe their, uh, against people kind of, um, yeah, there's just a, a history of violation and a history of kind of appropriating stories. Um, so I've been really interested in a local oral history um, that is built by the people whose stories um, that make up that history. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been working really like really local, like the Cheriho Youth Task Force in um, Charlestown, sorry, in Richmond. Um, I've been working with the um, Southern Rhode Island Volunteers. Um, I'm hoping to work with a lot of different organizations. Um, I think the library would be really great um, because of the kinds of outreach that you do have and the trust that you have in your community. Um, but the way it just works is that I've, through these organizations, connected with individuals and we do an hour long interview um, and it's recorded. And then through a partnership with the um, Rhode Island Historical Society and the Providence Public Libraries, these recordings are going to be submitted to what they've created, um, which is called an RI, the Rhode Island COVID archive. And this is a digital archive um, that's going, it is currently accessible and it started back in March um, and it's accessible to anyone with internet access um, and they manage the data. We'll be doing so for as long as possible. Um, and so Sophia, if I could jump in, I'm gonna just share my screen. You could um, please go on and I'll show that website. I, I was looking, looking. Yeah, at. for sure. And as you, if you click through it, you'll see that there's um, submissions of all different mediums. So some people submit journal entries or photo albums. Um, there's entries from students in a school district as yeah, you see. Um, they work with different school districts. Um, so what I'm doing is most is just exclusively oral history. It's oral recordings. Um, but I'm interested, you know, if if you have goals for collecting photos or other kinds of artifacts, um, I'd be happy to be involved in that. Um, if if that's something that you'd be interested in, because another aspect of this. Um, is that according to the COVID archives copyright rules, um, it's the, there's a lot of flexibility in being able to share data. So they're using what's called a creative commons copyright, which means that if you and I did an interview right now, you would be able to keep a copy of that recording. You're not giving up your rights to your data. Um, you could put that in your own personal family's archive, or if you have connections with a local museum or other local organization that you care about, that you want to have your story, you can donate your story to anybody. Um, so what I've been saying with, I've been working like with URI that they are interested in some of the oral histories that I collect. Um, so some of those recordings are not only going to this archive, but they're also gonna go to an archive that URI has created. Um, and I think that's really special because 
Um, there's, again, with this history in archival um, practices, there's a lot of suspicion about where your, where your data goes and who has the power to use your stories, um, who has yeah. access to your story. Um, and in this platform, it's really democratic. It's very open source. Um, yeah, you get to keep your data and control what happens to it. But that also means that whoever you give it to also has the liberty um, to use those stories. Um, yeah, that's a very broad overview. Um, Timeline wise, I'm looking to do this at least until the end of um, the summer. So I was I started in August and would like to end in September, kind of have a year long sort of thing. Um, if I'll I put it out there that I recently got a grant um, from the National Endowment of the Humanities. Um, and that is um, to fund anyone who identifies as black or indigenous people of color, if they would like to participate. Um, I am paying them to participate either as if they would like to be interviewers, if they'd like to interview family members or people in their community, um, I'm paying for their time. Or if they would like to be interviewed by me, um, I'm also paying for their time. And I think this aspect of remuneration um, for people's stories who've historically been used against them or been excluded because of them, um, this has been a kind of a big aspect of the um, diversity outreach that I've been trying to build up. <laughs> um, so that's, I think, if we um, work together in the future, I think that's, um, I just want to make it clear that it's like a pretty important part of this project. Sure. Um, very interesting. I like the open source idea. So how do you do the recordings or how do like you get your submittals and I so I use my phone. <laughs> um, I have a voice memos app. It works really well. Um, and the recording, it's an MP4. Um, and then I convert it to an MP3, burn it to a CD. And that's what I give to people. Um, again, it's about an hour. So it's a good chunk of data. So CDs are like pretty much the only way to um, kind of give that file over to people. Um, and then when, I'm not exactly sure when um, I'll be submitting them to the archive, but at some point I'll be submitting digital files to the archive, to the COVID archive. And are you working with anybody specifically at PPL? Um, I am, I'm working, I, this is terrible. I can't remember her last name, but her first name is Kate. Um, and she's one of the founders of the um, RI COVID archive. Okay. That was my question. So is Providence Public the only one? Maybe all the libraries? Because, I mean, then you have access to a lot of different people, all of their... Oh, then you just want South Kingstown, right? Or South County? Yeah, all of South County. Um, okay. Your library system is actually the first to reach out to me. Um, I reached out to um, the Rhode Island Library Association, I think. Um, and I never heard back from anyone. So I was kind of slowly strategizing how to reach out to libraries um, because my relationship with the Providence Public Library is only in that they are managing my data. Um, okay. Because if you notice in the archive, there's, there's a map where you can see um, geographically where submissions are coming from. Most of them are from the Providence area, Providence which is area. awesome, mm -hmm. but I was really curious to see um, a more organized effort to get more geographic diversity um, in the archive. Sure. And um, how, well, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, how are you finding people? How are you recruiting people? Is that something you need help with? Is that something that you're <laughs> looking for, for like our library system to help recruit? Is that I think, because it's it sounds amazing what you're doing. Like I'm the one who brought this idea up and it was just kind of a, something that I was thinking about. And Tim was like, well, but I saw this in um, Hanging at Belmont and we don't want to do parallel things. So let's find out what she's doing. And it was just kind of like a brainstorm. I mean, it literally just came out. So I think it's amazing what you're doing and you're coordinating with so many people and it sounds like very organized. Um, 
but so I mean I guess what I'm asking is like what do you need like if yeah. we were to like get on and help or whatever just what I don't know how could we help yeah her? um I think it's it's something that yes I absolutely need help finding people <laughs> um the way I've been connecting with individuals is very much um kind of word of mouth. So I interview one person, they give me the contact of one other person who gives me the contact of one other person. Yeah. Um, and there's beauty in that. I think there's also danger in that. Um, you kind of, I've been noticing that I've kind of inhabited very specific bubbles, mostly elderly white women <laughs> who have, are beautiful. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. Um, so I think something that I'm really interested in with the libraries is your connection with families, um, with young families, with families with young kids. Um, I have just started building a relationship with um, a middle school in Davisville, um, but that's like the only connection I have to young people um, and young families. So. Um, yeah, finding ways to spread the word, um, I think is the most important thing. And that's what I've you know, really been leaning on organizations who have built trust in their communities um, to help me with. Um, I'm also open to any other ideas. Um, that's kind of the only one that I've really examined. Um, but you know, when the weather gets nicer, it'd be great to have, you know, locations out in public. Um, to you know, I've imagined setting up a table um, where people can come and do short interviews, um, something that's a lot more low key that maybe could include, you know, a whole young family who's just come out of the library and they do a small interview. Um, of course, with COVID, that's complicated, and with cold weather, that's not possible. Um, so that's like another idea of a more creative way of using the libraries. Um, and I'm totally open to, you know, if you have specific um, questions that you want to explore, specific mediums, if oral history isn't your thing, but you'd love, you know, to do, I don't know, collecting art or something, I don't know. Um, I'm also totally open to exploring other opportunities because the COVID archive um, accepts any kind of mediums. So I think whatever you want to collect um, that could be contributed to the COVID archive and become really valuable um, to the whole state, so. Well, we certainly have connections to young families and, uh, you know, kids. I mean, what's a six-year-old's take on this? <laughs> um, you know, so I, I would think, Laurel, that be uh, just, just to publicize this in the library to some of the families that come in uh, to sit down and, and have the kids talk, not just the parents, but the kids too. You know, mm -hmm. my, my, my father was nine years old in 1920 and eight in 1919, and he's passed 20 years, but he never spoke about his experience in the Spanish flu epidemic. And Mine you know, either. Kind of, Same what? thing, Mario. My father yeah. was alive during that. He never told me anything about never it. He told me anything about it. It just didn't. Nothing. Nothing. So you know, it's, it's a sort of a hole and, uh, you know, a hundred years from now, we're going to have another one of these, hopefully yeah. it is at least a hundred years, but, uh, I, I think <laughs> the library should offer that, uh, to, to uh, Sophia. Sophia, how do you spell your last name, by the way? Um, it's R I C H T E R. Victor. Okay. <laughs> He's taking minutes. He's not creepy. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you looking for a certain number of um, histories or um, do you, are you cap off at a certain point? Are you, edit, are you editing them as you go? Or are you just doing straight up the one hour interview is what you submit? Yeah, it's, um, it's something I have, I don't have a, an official answer. Um, what I've done so far is um, no editing, but I leave it as an option for um, every participant. If they are uncomfortable with something that was said before um, they sign their release forms. We can talk about editing. It hasn't come up before. So um, there's release forms, even though the content remains the interviewee, there's still release forms that allow it to go to the 
hosted site at PPL and Historical Society. Is that? Yes, yeah. Um, and I can talk about that very briefly, but just um, Lindsay to finish that question that you had was um, loosely between 60 um, or so interviews would be really great. <laughs> um, I can't tell if I'm aiming high or aiming low, um, but that's, that's kind of, um, yeah, what, what I've been shooting for. I have 11 right now, so. <laughs> How about the high schools? Have you approached any of the, like South Kingstown High School? Did you go to South Kingstown High School, Sophia? I did, I did go to South Kingstown. There's High a good school. connection. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's something I've started having conversations with people about. Yeah. Um, but I, I older yeah, I was just teenagers, focused. Yeah. I think it's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, definitely, yep. Yeah, I think, you know, connecting with specific teachers um, would be the, has kind of been my approach so far, um, but I haven't, I haven't been successful yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, Laurel, the, there's um, two different kind of legal forms that are involved in this. One is a consent form, um, and that is consenting to being recorded. Um, it lays out kind of the framework for the project, the expectations for the participant, um, and yeah, little things about like HIPAA guidelines, like things to sit, things not to say. Um, and that is done at the beginning of an interview. And at the end, there's a release form, which is basically just consent that your recording is going to be sent to an archive. Um, and then that is the point when you can determine how you want to be identified, whether you want any restrictions on your data, how, um, yeah, how you're feeling about, you know, wanting things edited, um, that sort of thing. Well, I think to start, um, the, the least we can do is if you have extra copies of your poster, we could certainly post those uh, in our libraries. And then I'd uh, be interested in hearing what other board members say about how much more the library might want to do or, or should do, or should we consider putting together a, an ad hoc subcommittee of the board of people that might be interested in working on this further? What, what's the, oh. the thought? I would think that uh, Sophia is doing it. So why not just give her access and let her, we don't need to get in, get in the middle of this, just let her do it. Mm -hmm. We could certainly, um, yeah, please send me, you know, whatever you have promotional materials and we could push it out that way. Um, I, you know, maybe the board should do interviews and, you know, not only can, it, you know, it go to the archive, but then we could put it on our own YouTube. Um, I think kind of, sometimes you gotta start at home and then it, it branches out a little. So, and, and it will give us a feel for, for what it, it, it actually entails. And, and so um, I, I definitely think it's a start. I think it is in tune with, you know, what Lindsay and, and then Hillary had started talking about where, you know, as, as stewards and record keepers of stuff, a lot of stuff, you know, used to be print, now it's digital, now, you know, it's, it's ever evolving. And, and this is um, something that it, it should be documented. It's just, this is all new, you know, I'll be totally uh, full disclosure, new to me, you know, how we do it, how we do it right. So if, if somebody else is taking the lead, I think we should just kind of try it out ourselves, you know, and, and see what it's about. Well, and, and Sophia's got the format. We don't want to invent the wheel. You've got mm -hmm. the um, consent and all that kind of stuff. Right. right. Um, maybe you could send us, Sophia, like, do you have a list of questions you go through, I mean, could we see, or I guess I could just go on the website and watch some of your interviews. Yep. That would probably, that'll what I'll do. I'll go on that website. Well, so I don't, I have, I don't have any of the interviews posted right now. Oh, yours um, aren't, but other right. people's are. Right. And yeah, I think I'm, I haven't actually looked at what other recordings are, are in the archive right now. 
Um, no, I think I think that's a good point, though. We before we would give you uh, access to people in our library, we'd like to see what your work has been up to date. You know, mm -hmm. or a list of the questions. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I can definitely send you a list of questions. I'd like to see some actual interviews. Yeah, some examples, all of it. Yeah, I think that's a, a good start. Um, all new to us, um, but something that we we're interested in doing. You know, yeah. overall, as a as a larger mission of just um, you know being yeah, a so repository, being a repository for information, however, it is awesome. Okay, so from this. Um, Sophie, you'll send to Tim and, or the whole board um, some questions or, or however your framework, like I'm trying to figure out what the best way to, can you send us or it, I know it's not posted yet, any of your interviews, but is there a way for you to share that with us? some past interviews? Um, I can. Um, I can send you, um, I mean, I can send you a whole interview if you'd like to listen to it. <laughs> sure. um, and then I can also send you questions. Um, my style, it's very um, unstructured. So while I have specific when themes. Would your, when would your interviews be up online so we... I'm not going to submit them until probably September mm -hmm. okay well if you could just email them uh, to me and also if you do have extra copies of your poster uh, drop them mm -hmm. off at the uh, uh, libraries um, people do read those posters on the bulletin boards I know because I yeah. have experience with that yeah absolutely and then just one more quick question. You said it was part of a grant. Is there any kind of time frame or, and you mentioned there was monetary compensation for the interviews. What, what's that about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, there's a grant that I have that is going through um, the end of May. And the, monetary um, amount is something that will depend on how often you contribute. Um, it's $50 per interview and the, but it'll be capped like per person. You can only submit up to six interviews. Um, and the, the way it's, I haven't actually been able, I had, I don't have access to the money yet. I just got it. Um, but the, people who are eligible for the grant are if you identify as black or indigenous people of color um, in the community. Okay. And you are interested in either being interviewed, I'll pay for your time, or if you're interested in being an interviewer. So if you have a grandmother or you have you know, someone in your community you'd like to interview, um, I'll pay for them to, be, to, to, to interview. Um, and I'm working with an oral history professor at URI who is willing to set up kind of a um, oral history training workshop um, in the event that anyone would want to kind of learn more about the interviewing process um, and different ways of kind of framing questions, developing their own questionnaires to suit their own, um, you know, the own, the, their own stories that they'd like to tell um, around COVID, obviously. Um, that's also, an aspect of the grant um, that people would be eligible to take advantage of. Okay, well, thank you for yeah, taking this thank you. Thank you through so our much. meeting. It was a great explanation of it. it. Sounds like a wonderful project. Um, okay, if, unless there's any other well, thank questions. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let's move on to the next item, which is on uh, the budget for uh, fiscal year 22 and collection development. Hello. So um, I had touched upon that at the last meeting. Um, we are level funded um, and I did not really change too much, but what I did do 
was out of the uh, 102,000 dollars that is dedicated to materials or software or platforms, um, I, I just took um, some of that out of print because we are not buying as much print. We're not even getting as much print even when we're buying it. It's not, it's not even, it's weird what's going on with the book world, I think. Um, but uh, just shifted, allocate, reallocated um, more of that to computer software and digital content. So um, it's not um, much of a, it's no change pretty much to our bottom line, um, but it's just with an eye towards, we're just, we're not gonna be spending as much on magazines and newspapers and that type of thing um, as we have in the past. So that, that was a small step, but not a big step towards, you know, what we really, um, have to pay attention to when it comes to just libraries in general and um, that, that's the budget besides that it's level uh mario i hear your concerns i don't think it's a much of a concern this fiscal year um but definitely somebody something we have to keep our eye on is, um, fy 23. yeah so the initial <laughs> budget hearing was it was January 6th, that's gone by, that went okay? That did, um, very preliminary, broad strokes, um, you know, nothing specific to departments. Um, yeah, nothing that, I, that stands out in my mind. Obviously, I mean, you guys are living in town, you know, a lot of it's a school. Um, and we're just a small piece in that whole thing, so. I show the next important date is the 25th, is that right? Or, or is it? Uh... Well, tomorrow's the CIP. Um, so that's important for our water leak. Um, and then I don't have that schedule right in front of me, but you're probably right. The 25th or, or whatever that date is, Mario, I think you're probably right on that, is the public hearing on the whole budget. Yep. Right. I will have a meeting before then. Um, and I don't know when it is yet. I'll let you know as soon as I know where it's just kind of like a one-on-one a -on -one with um, the manager in finance if they had any you know, questions or changes, that's when I would hear about that from that side. Mm -hmm. So I will, I will let you know and report back. Um, but it's, it's pretty standard. I'm mm -hmm. good at arguing our case. Okay. Okay. Um, and content on my platform, item number 10. Okay, um, so we do have our own YouTube. Woo, I'm gonna share my That's screen exciting. one more time for the evening. <laughs> and this is, this is cool. And I just, I mean, this is all kind of transpiring this week. Um, so there we all are. Well, mostly me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, we're gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> Famous. But uh, yeah, a lot of me. So uh, all our meetings are there um, that we had recorded since. I encourage all of you, uh, this is just, if you Google YouTube and then search YouTube, just search South Kingston Public Library and subscribe because the more um, people we have subscribed, the more kind of whistles and bells we'll get as far as how we can rearrange stuff and, um, you know, uh, who, you know, might get attracted to it. So um, uh, I encourage you all to Google, well, not Google YouTube and then search YouTube, South Kingston Public Library and subscribe. Um, 
YouTube, okay. right? That's good. We can watch the progress of Mike's beard. From <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know it's much shorter there. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> yeah, it's gotten longer. What so. Um, that's exciting because, um, and I'm going to put up the panelist video um, maybe tomorrow, but probably, uh, probably week's end. And then we could also start um, putting up, we don't really record our story times and stuff now. There, you know, there, there are some issues when we think about privacy and who wants to be recorded and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. So we were going to look at, you know, just doing some little short book reading snippets, have Miss Tina read a book or Miss Brandy read a book and, and just start populating it with some um, original content. So um, yay, we finally got it. And um, I think it's gonna be a good tool. It helps make it easier to actually- Any um, children's authors in Rhode Island that we could get to do a reading of their book or something we could post? Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Just an idea. I'd have to, I don't know any off the top of my head, but. I know, I, can't, I don't know any either, but just David, a thought. I don't know if there's anybody locally in South Kingstown or, mm. I don't know, just, I, just a thought. I think there's cool. a lot of opportunities like that. Um, yeah. Uh, it, Laurel? Yeah. Oh, thank you for, for also putting it on YouTube so that will be much more accessible. And is it possible, I know that Jessica's done the bibliography, is, is it possible to add a link to that as part of the bibliography of the other works on the history of slavery in the area? I think so. Um, there's a spot where you're, you know, put in text or description. So I, I think you could probably link out to that. This is like many, many other things all new to me. So um, I'm, I got, you know, a good start practicing with the meetings and um, I'll, I'll keep You're going to be an expert. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come to you that's for all like my YouTube, actually, my YouTube like, news. I tell my kids they're not allowed to go on it. No yeah. YouTube. The best learning tool <laughs> to actually have to do something from that kind of scratch where you don't know what you're doing and you yeah. make mistakes. So. Totally. Um, but uh, yeah, I will see you about adding Links to that. Great. That's awesome. That's I think that's exciting. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, public comment, Elizabeth, you've been sitting so patiently. Yeah. <laughs> Anything new in Kingston? You're our spy up there. No, it's been quite quiet with no university classes, and mm -hmm. you can get out of South Road. Uh, it really is amazing. They haven't started working on uh, Upper College Road at all, have they? I haven't seen anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, if, you know, if I could, I had one note that I forgot I wanted to see at the beginning of the meeting. So in one of the meetings I was watching, one of the town council meetings I was watching, I think they intend to have the board report um, on a basis, you know, there's so many different boards in the town, but I think at some point they might um, ask us to report, um, you know, at one of their meetings. So I just wanted to, to throw, you know, plant that seed that that might happen down the road. Sure. Um, there are many boards um, mm -hmm. but that, that could happen. Okay, well, if there's no, uh, Tim, Tim, I have uh, I have something I'd like to bring up. Um, yes, it has to do with this Michigash we've all gone through in D.C. Um, one of the things uh, Senator Romney said is that truth matters, and I think uh, you look at the election results. Forty percent of Rhode Islanders don't believe the election was fair. I'd like to get a local election official to talk about on uh, this kind of a meeting, how the votes here are counted and why people should believe it. You know, I, I think that's uh, an important thing. Um, instead of just getting mad at all the lies that are being told about this, let's just tell them the truth, show them the truth. 
from with somebody <laughs> local that people might actually know, you know? So anyway, my idea is to reach out to whoever counts the votes in South Kingstown to ask them to just simply explain why we should believe that the votes are counted accurately. Mm. That's something that we, we could certainly consider. I'm sure the board of canvassers, the town clerk or both uh, right. might can we, speak to that. Can we add this to our agenda for next month? And sure. I could do a little legwork and, and, you know, kind of see who could do that or how best to do that. That would be great because yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to just be mad. I want to actually make it better, you know? We do have an expert right here in the meeting. Elizabeth has done how many elections, uh, Elizabeth? Oh, you're uh, muted. She's you're muted. muted. <laughs> well, Elizabeth has been a long time <laughs> election volunteer. Oh, I've been a poll worker for many, poll, many, many years. Poll worker, many, many years. Mm -hmm. Well, I, that would be, you know, I really, I'm just looking for, here's how they're on, here's how it honestly works, you know. And uh, I will say that the people who work at the polls, the people in the town council, uh, town offices, they are all wonderful. And uh, right with it, can't say enough good things. All right. Take so, the job very seriously. I have a and it's a very important job. So I, I have a question though, is the board of canvassers, is that somebody that, like would we have commissions and boards in place for the town? And I'm just wondering if we're, if there's another body that could address this, if that might be better suited to for that. You know what I mean? The board of canvassers, that type of thing. And I, I don't know, and I'll certainly do my legwork. Um, you mean for them to host it instead of us? Right, or for if, you know, if you, if there's questions, if there's like um, explanation, it, it there's other bodies in place perhaps that, that should address it. Isn't that the Secretary of State? Isn't that what Nellie Gorbea, I know that she was all involved with the absentee ballots. That was a big mm -hmm. issue. Um, the town has its own board of, I want to say board of canvassing or board of canvassing. Yes, board of canvassers. Right. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what their purview is, but I'm just, uh, I'm just thinking out loud because. I mean, it seems to me Mario's just thinking to, we have a good venue and a good community to provide the service of communication um, we, we is what I'm hearing from Mario. I don't know if you feel like it's too much of a, I don't know if anybody feels like it's too much of a political issue. I do not, but <laughs> um, I don't know if, if that's where you're going with it, Laurel. Um, if you feel like it's, you're like, Ooh, is this something that the well, library wants I, to touch I, well, on or not? But also, I mean, the way I, I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. If there's already a body in place that talks about these issues, handles these issues, that's probably the forum that it should come out at. Um, uh, not to say that we can't spread the information. I, I just, I, I'm not, I don't know. It's just new idea. You get it rolling around. My yeah, head. totally. Well, we have our next election coming up on March 2nd. That's right. Right. Yeah, the town clerk is really probably the person to start with because yeah, and I have a great relationship with her, so I'll certainly um, talk to her. But just so I'm clear, you're looking for the actual process, like what what do you do to count these votes? What why? Process? Yeah, I'm looking for why should I believe that the process is honest and accurate? Tell me why. And, and and be willing to answer some questions about it from people in the meeting, you know? And and also somebody <laughs> local, somebody local, not somebody from Providence, you know, somebody local. Hey, I live here, you know? 
that yeah, like this of, is what yeah. this is what happened here. This is what we did. Yeah. This is yeah. Yep. Not not what happened uh, in Michigan or whatever. That here here in South County. Here's what we can we do, and here's why it's trustworthy. Okay. Well, that's a good point, Mario, because it's like I took my ballot, I put it in the machine, and yep. I saw the thing click. So where does that go? I have no idea. <laughs> where are all those numbers, you know, at the end of the election? And then there's all the absentee ballots that have to be done manually. No, it's a good question. And so we have this horrible situation where 60 or 70 million people don't believe it. Right. I, mean, yeah. I, I, I can't understand it, okay? But I, the only way to convince people that it's accurate is to show them, to tell them, and to stay after it. I hear what you're saying, Laurel, but if it comes from the board of canvassers, then it becomes all oh, this, they're only covering their butts, you know? Uh, if it's an independent body like us, here, here's the information. You know, if, if you want to question this person, go right ahead. I think it might have more impact. Mm -hmm. But that's an idea. That's my idea. And uh, Laurel, it just an idea that I have, it's kind of built um, around that idea that Mario has, which is um, the larger issue of like civic education. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And if you could place it in that context, um, mm -hmm. I think it could, it could be made to appear less political. That's a really good idea. Especially with respect to things like, um, like local government. Uh, I've led my son's uh, Boy Scout troop <laughs> on their like, um, um, on the community badge. And, you know, I learned um, uh, lots and lots of things about the, uh, the government in the town of South Kingstown that I would have never otherwise have learned. Um, and there should be somebody out there who's willing to offer some sort of uh, seminar on that as well. Yeah, it was one of the it, just one of the, the things that people point to with uh, the current crisis we're in is that you know, the, the failure of local media. Now, we're fortunate that we don't have that significant of a problem in South Kingstown, but there are fewer and fewer reporters of papers mm -hmm. uh, in South Kingstown and Narragansett. So there are issues that aren't getting covered. And one yeah, of the and you could basic. make it more than just about the election. You could make it about how local government runs. Yeah, so. mm, that's a really good idea. So, yeah, we, like would you see this as a program? See, and then we're running into the whole platform. How are we going to present it? Uh, are you looking to see this, you know, open to the public, or through? A panel like like we did with the panelists, where it's recorded and then we put it out there for the public. I'm just I I'm trying not to. I I gotta be honest. I am trying not to make more work for my colleagues right now. Oh yeah, sure. We are, are very. Um, yeah, I think that some of it should be just the obligation of the, the town of South Kingstown itself. Yeah, um, and they're looking to do that. They are looking to do PSAs. They're looking to be more streamlined in the way they're delivering information in their website and, and other things, which is where I say, I, I don't want to now all of a sudden, you know, come do it for us when they're trying to, you know, do it for themselves. I, I, I don't, I, I have to think of, yeah, we'll certainly put it on the agenda. I will do some, some homework on it, but I, I want you to keep in mind that it, it is a hot topic. I was gonna <laughs> say, just say it. Right. Just Very say it. political. <laughs> and I don't want to put my colleagues, my wonderful colleagues in a, in a position where they're, you know, feel like they're being questioned and how they're doing their job. Because yeah. I know they are trustworthy, so um, that's just my my first thoughts off the off the cuff. I appreciate, and that. I get that people don't get it, but some people will never get it. Right. Well, um, Laurel, maybe you could just reach out to the, the town clerk and um, bounce the, okay. the conversation that we're having off her. And then we can revisit this at the next meeting and decide what, if anything, we want to do. Um, it's going to be a pretty busy period for the next month for town 
official, so it's probably timing wise not good, but it would be good to perhaps do it before the um, budget referendum, the referendum on the um, state budget, and there will be a referendum on the school building as well at some point. Right. Um, I'm not sure if that's been scheduled yet. So uh, why don't we revisit this next meeting and, and see if we Absolutely. think a good idea. Absolutely. And speaking of the next meeting, uh, I forgot to, I don't have the second page of the agenda, so I don't remember the date in February. What, what anybody help Nine. me out? I think it's the 9th. <laughs> February 9th. So our next meeting will be 6 p.m. February 9th. And uh, hearing no other action, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Liz uh, made the motion. I have a second. I'll second uh, it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. It was a great meeting. Yes. Very interesting. Thank well, you. Before you go,